And thank th thank you for all the congratulations on a thousand. I had no inkling that we were gonna <laughs> reach a thousand, period. Much less when we did, so I'm very grateful and, and happy that, that people seem to enjoy watching a nerd in spreadsheets, you know? All uh, right, so mazlach. YouTube, welcome. This is our 100 subscriber special. We are going to finally make the long promised, long discussed Creole between Lenadailef and Kranzlor. So that's what we're going to jump into today. We're going to work on the phonology first. So I think there can't really be much further ado. Let us go zoom ourselves down into the side. Whoa, there we go. I'm 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 just I'm I'm in this little box here. I got my my sort of mime shirt. I don't know. Is this a mime shirt? I don't know if this is a regulation mime, but um okay. So what do we have on the screen here? We have a new spreadsheet which I've called Creole. Well, you can't see the title, but I assure you it's called Creole. And on the left, and then on the right, we have Lena Thyleff. And so our first task is going to be to formalize the phonology of Lena Thyleff so that we can have something, um, we can have a sort of template to, to sort of cram Kranzlor, which has a very different phonology, into. So I'll briefly, for those of you who haven't seen these languages before, I'll do a little, uh, a little vibe introduction. Nothing too formal, but uh, so you get the feeling of what they sound like. Uh, so let's see, we have some, we have some Lenadilef here. So these are some cool proverbs. This is, do not watch others eating chickens. So it sounds like this. Muf un rok heluk faranam. If you wanted to say, do not watch chickens eating other things, you would say, muf un rok furach haluk. So this hopefully gives you a, a gist of the sound of this language. Muf un rok furach haluk faranam. These are different, slight variations on the same proverb, exactly depending on what you are warning people against watching chickens doing. Um, we also have a little poem here, which I can recite. Uh, I'll give you a, a brief translation afterwards. Mith anagladas tamanech, mi lunukech kuschansuth, furach aluth halish, susukech nefish sefmath. And roughly translated, this means um, once you cross the river, you will no longer receive the blessings of me, which is the name of a goddess. Alas, chickens will devour you. Uh, but it will not be anything like the way that my heart feels. Roughly speaking, that's a, a decent English rendering of this poem, which is actually a, a translation of a, a poem from another conlang. If you've followed the series before, you'll know that. Um, but um, it's a bit of a breakup poem. Um, it's a sad one. I'm going to just pay a little bit of attention to the chat now because I have been neglectful. Um, yeah, Rusty's act. So, uh, Essentially what we're doing, we have, we've worked on two languages already and now we're going to take them and sort of put them together and see what comes out. So the, the situation, the within the world situation is that group of people who speak this one language, Kranzlor, let me get, uh, see if I can get that up on the screen, which has uh, words that look like this, Mwalt Kalbe, Lyapklat, Nis, Mlesmles, Mpram. Very different feeling from all this Anagladas, Tamanej, you know, business of Lenadailov. And um, these, the people who speak this Kranzlor language have come to the realm or the, the, the region where the Lenadailov language is spoken. This is Lenadailov over on the right. And they have, they have, by some means, we're not sure exactly what, but they have become a prestigious um, social group within within this society. So the people who speak Kranzlor are sort of on top of the on top of the the heap, and the, as a result, their language becomes very high prestige. So the speakers of Lenadilef are either they are either desire or are obligated to or will benefit from 
some um, some knowledge of Quran's lore, but it's going to be an imperfect knowledge uh, because the contact is not, um, for whatever reason, uh, going to be of the of the nature that the Lenadilev speakers will learn Quran's lore perfectly. So what we have is this sort of language contact situation where we have people speaking a language that has some features of both uh, Quran's lore and Lenadilev. And crucially, there are people who learn this sort of language, this contact-based language from birth, and that's what makes it a Creole. I may, hopefully that is a relatively, <laughs> relatively clear explanation of the situation. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of chicken lore developing here as well. We'll probably get into that uh, in a bit. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to come up with a description of Lenadhyla phonology. Because if the speakers of Lenadhyla are learning Kran's lore, we need to know what, what their starting point is and what the characteristics of their first language is. And then we can start to um, figure out what the phonology of Kranzlor is and and how they can sort of um, adapt Kranzlor to be pronounceable by by the mouths of Lenadilev speakers essentially. So uh, let's look at let's make a little let's make a little phonology tab here because I don't think we've really defined the phonology of of uh, Lenadilev yet. So eighteen decent font size. So let's start let's start by doing something like labials, coronals, dorsals, and see how far this takes us. Stop. So we're making a little con consonant inventory here. Stops, fricatives, nasals. Um, I don't think we have any affricates, so we can just leave that out. Mm, approximants. We don't have to be too exacting here. Let's just start to put in things that we see. So if we start from the start of this, this set of examples, we have, well, we have a nasal, a labial nasal, ma. We have so mas. So we have a coronal fricative s here. Maslach. Oh, we could maybe even do the vowels as well. So. Let's let's do that too. Hi. Why it removes my formatting, I will never understand. Mid low runt central back. Great. Alright, so we have mas, maslach. So I'm going to put Z in parentheses here because it is only it only comes up when the the what? Well, well, okay. So it's an allophonic distinction. Voicing in um, fricatives in this language is is allophonic. So because we have this s phoneme within um, two voiced segments, in between two voice segments, it will be voiced as well. So that's why I'm putting in z. Note that in the romanization we don't write this uh, this voicing. So mas maslach. So we have put L in approximants. Uh, we have also A ah, and we have schwa as well. Where, you know, where on earth is my IPA keyboard? There we go. So we have schwa, mas, maslach. So we have dorsal fricative as well. So that's good. And thank th thank you for all the congratulations on a thousand. It's um it's been such a fun it's been such a fun ride. I have I had no inkling that that we were gonna <laughs> reach a thousand. Period. Much less um much less when we did. So I'm very grateful and and happy that that uh, that people seem to enjoy watching a nerd in spreadsheets. You know. Uh, right, so maslach. So I think we've gleaned everything we can from the first sentence. Next, mas maslarof li. So we have maslarof. So we have the same allophonic thingamabob to be technical going on in the dorsals, in the velars more specifically. 
Um, and then we have L, which we already had, F. So we have F here, and I'll just, spoiler alert, it does also voice in the same circumstances. We have O, and I think that's good for, for that one. We've, we've basically got, got the nerds in spreadsheets club here, and I'm very happy to be among such fine and exalted company. <laughs> All right, so what else do we have? Mas maslachet, maslachet. Uh, so this gives us a T. And basically what we're doing here is we're, we're coming up with the inventory from the data because we didn't, we derived Lendothilef. We never um, set out and planned Lendothilef from scratch. What we did was we took proto call and we applied some sound changes to it. And as a result of those sound changes, the inventory of proto call is not the same as the inventory of Lendothilef. And what is, you know, what, what vowels, what consonants it has, um, what, what is allophonic um, and what is phonemic will differ from, from protocol to lenadilef as a result of those sound changes. So it's good to, what, to go back to lenadilef once we've done all those sound changes and, and look at it synchronically. So look at, look at it as a sort of a, as a snapshot in time and what sort of system does it have? And this is the system that it appears to have uh, so far. We've got more to do. So mas maslachet, great mas maslach so this is a front rounded vowel and i'm going to need my ipa board again i know i've tried the ipa input methods there's been it was pain maybe i can try it now that i'm back with my try it again now that i'm back with my old keyboard my proper keyboard the you know the clacky one um and then we have we have sh as well. So we're just going to, I'm just going to put that here. And yes, like all the other fricatives, it is going to have a voiced allophone. Okay. Mas maslerish. Great. All right. Uh, then we have mas maslerofleet. The sun was shining. Nothing new there. Mas hylen. Maslarov Li. Okay, so we have to add another fricative here. Mas Hailen Maslarov Li. Mas Fereth Maslarish. The sun will shine tomorrow. Uh, well, we have a th. So we need another column for coronals. And we need to put the interdentals in here. So we have th and it's elephone of the. And if I could find them, spectacular. There we go. Okay. So that's what we've learned here. Highland. So whether this is a diphthong or a vowel glide sequence, we can be agnostic, but let's, let's analyze it as a vowel glide sequence for now. Not a lot hangs on that but nevertheless let's do it um, the sun shines brightly the sun shines shiningly or alternatively the sun shines a great shining which is beautiful all right so this gives us k uh, all right, great. And I think we've learned nothing else, so let's move on. All righty. Myth anagladas tamanei. So we have E here. That's good. We have A. And we have N. Myth anagladas tamanei. Mi lunu u. Here, Lunukeich Kus Han Suth Kus Han Suth. I think we have everything there. Yep, Furach Aluth Halish. Nothing, nothing new there. Susukeich Navish Sef Math. 
Okay. Uh, and then the rest of our corpus is here, which we've talked about a little bit already. Muf, Wun, Rok, Hluk. Okay, so we need front rounded E. Um, and I think that's everything that we have. So let's take a look at, yeah, right? That's, oh no, wa. We have wa. Let's put wa here. Although you could also consider wa here. Great. Okay. Nice. Oh, I'm hearing that there's some inspiration in the air. People are making new conlangs. They're getting inspired to do new things with their conlangs. If, if I've played any role in that, then I have fully done my job and I am over the moon with happiness. Uh, and oh my goodness, Sparsh, thank you for saying cellar, that you find it, you find Linda that I left cellar Dory. It's, it's been engineered in that way. I've been trying to, to eke out that, that cellar door quality. Um, but I don't know something about that, uh, or susukeich and agladas. That's another example. Just does it. Just mm, I don't know. It just does it. Okay, so let's look at this um, inventory from the point of view of of a sort of a synchronic linguist. What do we notice about it? So. There are no voicing, so there are no phonemic voicing distinctions in any, um, for anywhere, really. <laughs> we have allophonic voicing of fricatives, um, much in the same way that Old English uh, does or did. Um, we have no allophonic voicing of stops. Um, and we have a gap, a really interesting gap here. So there's no, there's no P in... Um, in Lenadilef, and this could come in handy uh, as something cool uh, to uh, to distinguish or s some difference when we look at. Uh, let me see. I'll formulate this sentence <laughs> better when I show you what I'm what I'm talking about. Here it is. So if we look at Kranslor, we see a lot of pa, pram, prit. So these are going to be things that are potentially hard for Lenadilef. L1 or native speakers um, to to pronounce, and so we may see some adaptation of uh, of this this uh, labial stop uh, coming from Kranslor. So that could be cool. All right, Sutton's asking how contrastive is s versus sh uh, in Lanadilif. I think it is fairly contrastive actually that's a good question let's um you know what i'm gonna during the break i will look off screen at the circumstances which give rise to sh and then i will let you know um it, it might be a bit daunting to uh <laughs> to go through the lexergy um live on screen all right so so this is a, what we're dealing with with linovilev so this is what we could call the the substrate phonology. Uh, we should also talk about syllable structure. So linothylif syllable structure is relatively um, relatively. Mm, it's kind of middle of the road, actually. Um, I think what we have is something like oop, wrong cell. CVC. Uh, do we have any clusters? Do we have any initial clusters? Or final clusters. It doesn't look like we do. And we also have um, something. So I forgot one thing. There, schwa um, is somewhat allophonic, or at least was at a stage of, of Lenadilif. But I think by the time that we are in the history of Lenadilif, and let me find where that is. Right, so we have our history of Lenadilif that we worked on last week. We have lots of loans coming in from from another language, Eustamia, and the um, that's going to bust up that um, that allophonic relationship between schwa and uh, and stressed vowels because Eustamia loans are going to come in with their unstressed full vowels, so they won't be schwa, and then that will break the 
um, the allophonic relationship, much in the same way that loans from French with V, with word initial V, uh, broke the, um, the FV allophonic relationship in Old English. Um, right, okay. So where were we? So yeah, this is our substrate phonology. Um, and then let's take a look at our superstrate phonology. It's uh, going to be where? Here. So none of that. So let's just take this and we'll put this here. Why it brings in random borders. Again, the mysteries of Excel or of Google Sheets rather. Uh, I will never fully understand. Why are these now all small? You know, again, the mysteries, mysteries of life. Right, okay. There we go. Spiffy. Now, this is the substrate phonology. Let's look at the superstrate phonology. And we can copy, let's just copy all of this. All right, and let's look at Kranzlor. So we don't have a lot of text from Kranzlor, uh, but we do have a word list. So that's that's going to be sufficient. I think that we will just assume that the grammar for Kranzlor is pretty much similar that, to um, Proto Sakrat. Um, we may we'll, we'll introduce some some wrinkles into that, but for now, it's a good first approximation. Uh, so it seems that we have um, definitely a more elaborated syllable structure. We can have CBC, yes, but we can also have something before this first C, which looks like we can have a nasal before it. And then we can also have something like, so if we look at nmya or ndias, we can also have this, we can call it a an approximant. We also have, or some sonorant. I'm trying to think, there was one where we had three syllables, three consonants before the, uh, where was it? M I think it was mpram. Yeah, mpram. So let's call this ncr, where n is a nasal and r is L R yod W. So more um, more elaborate, something that our our substrate phonology will not be able to tolerate. So we may see some schwa parenthesis. Yeah, and Zlor Taga, thank you. That's another good example. And okay, so then let's take a look at what vowels we have. It looks like we have at least here we have a e e. O, U. I think we have a five vowel system, the classic. Uh, so that will probably not present any trouble for Linodilef speakers. Let's see what else we have. So we have nasals, we have a labial nasal, we have a coronal nasal, we have a velar nasal, a dorsal or more specifically a velar nasal. Um, we have, we have ya. Yeah, we have uh, we have ra, we have la and ra. We can put them there. We have s, as we can see from nis. We also have z, nzun. Although that I believe may be allophonic because of the nasal beforehand. I think the only time we ever have z in this is when we have a nasal beforehand. Let's make sure. There we go. Z always with z, with n in front. Yeah. Okay. We have uh, a voiced and voiceless distinction. So we have k and I saw g somewhere. Where did that go? Ga. There we go. So we have kg, we have td, and we have pb. We have w as well. That belongs here. And I could be wrong, but I think that's everything. Oh, who? H. We have H as well. So it's a very different, um, very different kind of inventory than Lenadilef, which is basically fricatives, the language. Uh, but in the case of Kranzlor, 
Uh, we have very few fricatives, actually. Looks like just two phonemic fricatives. And that will be fun to play with. But I think, I think we need to put in a break for YouTube here. Um, I am going to come back to the full screen. YouTube, thanks again for joining us. Uh, come back and we will keep going on this Creole. I think we're having fun. So why stop now? See you next time.